Hey guys, um, it's me, Glenn, here. Uh, sorry if it looks like I'm getting close to the camera, but um, it's nighttime and my parents are asleep. And I have my fan on buffering this noise, so hopefully they can't hear me. Um, this is going to be my coming out story. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling I might cry. I don't know. It, it's not a bad coming out story. It's just the feelings and the emotions leading up to the coming out. Um, the things I had to deal with, uh, yeah, so, I'm hoping I don't cry, I really hate crying, I know, if you saw my one video, I kind of expressed some of the things I've went through because of being gay and stuff, um, but, I'm, there's a lot more to it, um, so yeah, so I'm going to explain it. Um, going back to my childhood, uh, like I've said before and stuff, I had a good childhood and stuff. There's no, you know, none of my problems stem from that. It's more, it stems from what I did to myself by suppressing and, you know, and, uh, not talking to anybody. I was always a very quiet, I guess, person when it came to feelings. I never shared anything. But anyways, when I was a kid, I went, or I didn't go. I, when I was a kid, um, <clears throat> there was a lot of things I noticed differently about myself. Um, I noticed, uh, like when my sister had guy friends and stuff, I'd always be more, and this is when I was a kid, so it's, I can't say I was sexually attracted to them, obviously not, but I just found them more pleasing to the eye, I guess. Um, same thing with some of my brother's friends and stuff. Um, and I just, I felt it odd. You know, I was like, you know, at that time I didn't know what gay and straight were. I didn't know any of that. And I just, you know, I was like, oh, I just, you know, really, you know, like them, you know. And, um, so yeah, and as I grew up and stuff, my feelings became more and where you know I found that I wasn't really attracted to girls um, now saying this and stuff I with girls and stuff I do find them beautiful and stuff and um, I remember this one time at Walmart it was just the past summer there was this girl in there, and I'm telling you right now, it looked like she was from a gothic painting. I just loved her. She had a like a long white dress on, long black hair, and I, I'm serious. She was so breathtakingly beautiful, <clears throat> and I just wanted to tell her that so much, but I didn't want to freak her out and just you know go running up to her. But I, you know, I do feel I like. Um, you know, I see beautiful women and stuff, and I'm like, wow, she's really beautiful, and, you know, stuff like that, but sexually, I don't feel that way about any, you know, women. I don't, I'm not sexually attracted to any women. I, I'm attracted to all people on their personality and stuff, all people. I'm attracted to anybody with good personality and stuff, um, but I guess... What catches my eye is guys more, especially if they have a sweet, caring personality. I don't like the macho guys. I'm not, and I, and I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like the macho gays and I don't like you know the feminine gays and stuff. It's not that. No, I accept everybody. You know this. I I love and accept everybody. But for me and stuff, it's, I guess it's like more of a person like me that is very, you know, sensitive 
and stuff and cares you know I guess I want it in the in the middle where it's like feminine gay masculine gay kind of in the middle but because that's how I am I'm not strictly feminine I'm not strictly masculine definitely not masculine but <clears throat> I don't know but I mean I do embrace my femininity femi fem <laughs> Sorry if I screw that up, but uh, my feminine side, I embrace that. I do. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I've always, you know, I didn't care. <clears throat> I never cared, you know. But going back to when I started noticing guys and stuff, um, like I said, I, I saw the beauty in women, but I just... It did nothing, you know. I could fall in love as a friend with a woman. Um, that was, you know, beautiful and stuff like that. But I just never seen it anything past that. But now, saying that, going into middle school. Going into middle school. Um, I, my, um one cousin came out as gay and once that happened I completely shut off the idea of I, I I'm started learning by sixth grade that what gay meant and I I shut down on that idea I was like no you are not and stuff you are not gay you do not like guys you only like women that's what you need to be um so through whole middle school to help with this to get me out of my gayness I guess um I hung out with my brother more I hung out with uh one of my cousins not the one that came out the this one that I went to school with we were like best friends and stuff and I tried to become more masculine and every year we'd go to the Arnold's Classic and you know I was like oh yeah this is like a real manly thing to do you know gays don't do this and stuff and I'm <laughs> excuse my offense towards the gay community because the way I was it's not how I am now and I found out through self-discovery that what it was was I was kind of going back in on myself by hating myself and hating gays at the same time because of the fact I didn't want to tell myself that I was gay so I guess I became homophobic at that point because of the fact I was like no I'm not gay I those are disgusting you know blah 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 but don't worry I'm okay I'm <laughs> obviously I don't know why I feel like I have to explain that I'm okay now. I, you know, but it, it's a lot of, you know, I did a lot to prove to myself that I wasn't gay. And in high school, um, this is where the fills might come in at. In high school, I continued to fight this urge. And Um, I, I continued to work on being masculine and I said, I have to be masculine. I ha I'm not gay. I can't be gay because that's wrong. Um, and I was like, nobody will accept me and my family if I was gay. So I can't do this I can't be gay I can't so I you know I started uh, actively looking for a girlfriend and a lot of my family doesn't know this it was it was like my senior year I started getting on myspace at that time my senior year and 
I reconnected with some friends and one friend I connected with I you know was talking with her and stuff and I was trying to get her to go out with me to get these feelings away from me and she was like let's see where their summer goes well midsummer she contacts me and says I think I might be lesbian and I talked to her and I was like well why don't you give me a try first before you go lesbian yeah I was yeah we'll just go with that for right now um but and then after she was like I know my feelings she got kind of mad at me and you know it's understandable um and then I told her I was like well can you keep a secret and she said yes and I was like I've checked out some guys before and then I backtracked I said but I think it was just because I wanted their body type I, I it wasn't I was attracted to them I, I just wanted the body type you know I was envious of the body type but I was like but don't tell anybody because you know I, it was just a fluke it wasn't anything and stuff and um so yeah um I was still friends with her you know for a long time now we don't talk or anything I don't know why that is that's just how life is apparently we move on I guess but then I found this other girl I went to school with and I was like I was um when I tried to get girls to go out with me I was very abusive and I didn't mean to be it was um, nobody knew this um, I would do things I would say things and like not I mean I wasn't a, I was verbally abusive I obviously didn't actually abuse anybody but I um I put some people through hell because I couldn't be comfortable with myself and I truly apologize to those girls and actually one of them turned out to be a friend of mine and I mean she, we haven't talked in a couple of years or so but uh, she was a really good friend of mine up until a couple of years ago but I mean like I said I didn't do anything you know to drive her off she's the first one I actually came out to before I mean like three or four no wait three years no 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 2010 I came out to her and stuff but um but yeah I put a lot of girls through hell because I was trying to get a date from them so I could prove to myself that I wasn't gay and the final straw came in October of 2010 um, uh, 2010 October 2010 I um, got a hold of this one girl well we became friends on MySpace and stuff and we were talking and we, we were you know made plans to go to a football game a homecoming football game um, she was still in high school and I was graduated and um, I was verbally abusive to her and she stopped talking to me that night I um, took a knife and um, held it against my skin and um, tried to kill myself uh, tried to commit suicide um, it wasn't fun I mean obviously it the I look back on those years and I put myself through so much hell um, but 
I took a knife and I tried to kill myself. The only thing that saved me was the friend that came out to me as lesbian and I told her, you know, hey, come with, you know, have a date with me first and then we'll see. Um, she called me and I dropped the knife and stuff. Um, I, I, I thank her because if she wouldn't have stopped me, I would have went through with it. Um, I just felt like there's no end. There was no way out. There was... If I came out, no girl was loving me. No girl was going to love me, I felt. And I knew if I came out gay, my parents wouldn't accept me. I would, you know, be on my own. And... I just wanted it to end. I wanted the pain to go away. And I knew I couldn't be gay. Because, like I said, I, I thought for sure my family wouldn't be okay with that. And then, like I said, in 2010, one of the girls I verbally abused, she somehow stayed with me through all that. And we became like best friends. And she talked and we talked together and everything. In 2010, I told her, I was like, I'm gay. And she didn't care. I, I continued on the from 2010. I think somebody might be up. I continued on from 2010. And I kind of went back and forth with my gayness because I still felt like my family would hate me and stuff. Even though my friend was there for me, I didn't think, you know, my family would accept me for who I was. So I clung to religion. And that didn't work out because it just pretty much told me to hate myself so I got over that and then in 2012 I um, came out to my sister as bisexual and I came out to one of my friends as bisexual and I I guess I lied to them because even then I knew I was gay but I wanted to see their reactions and I'm sorry if it feels like I'm going back and forth on you know if I'm gay if I'm bisexual and stuff it's I'm trying to judge people's opinion of me and because I, I don't want to say their own thing and, you know, make my support system, you know, mad at me or hate me. I don't want to lose my loved ones and stuff. And, you know, I guess to my loved ones and stuff, it would seem like I'm going back and forth like, oh, I'm bisexual, I'm gay, you know. And a lot of times they'll say, I'm confused, or, you know, oh, you haven't been with a woman yet, and stuff like that, and that's why. It's not that. I d I've had these strong feelings for years, and for men, and I just, I, but like I said, back when I came out as bisexual, I knew I was gay. I knew I was gay, I, but like I said, I wanted to judge how they reacted to me saying this. And I, you know, they, you know, they accepted me and stuff, you know. At first, you know, my sister was a little hesitant, but she still accepted me and stuff. I remember one conversation we had, me and my sister had, back in 2010. 
I wrote my first book then, and um, she said something in front of my mom about, she's like, well, you know, if you're gay and stuff, we'll accept you and everything like that and stuff. And I stressed to her how much I loved women because of how I wrote them in my books and how, you know, stuff. And I got all defensive about it. And I wanted to be defensive because I don't want anybody to find out about me, you know. But, and then the election of 2012 came, and after, you know, Obama won the presidency and stuff that night, there was so much adrenaline in my body that I sat down and wrote a letter to my mom and dad and let them find it in the morning. And they said that no matter what, they would love me. And finding, but I came out to them as bisexual again. Um, but I think, I mean, I know my parents will love me, but I'm just afraid if I would fall, you know, if I fall in love with a guy and bring him home, they're going to be very disappointed. Um, I'd hope that's not the case. But, you know, the past several years has been a whirlwind for me. I mean, coming out, that was like the biggest thing. That was, you know, big lift off my shoulders. But I think I'm ready to come out again and let everybody know that I'm gay. I'm, uh, I mean, a few people know this already. Um, but I am, I'm, I'm gay. And I know I said that in the last video and stuff and, you know, I made like a hee-haw moment of it, but it's not something to laugh at. It's who I am. And, and no, I'm not, you know, checking out every guy or anything like that. And I'm not hitting on you or, you know, I... I'm very cautious of, you know, who I would flirt with and stuff, and I would never purposely hit on a straight person. I wouldn't. I do fear for my life. I do. Because of, especially living in a small town, I fear for my life. Because, you know, I fear that if it gets out that I am, they <laughs> lynch me. But there again, I know there's several um, lesbian and gay couples that live here in this small town. and So, I still have a struggle ahead of me. I know that. And I hope my parents do accept me for who I am. And will be okay if I, when I, not if I fall in love with a man, when I fall in love with a man. It's no longer if. And I gotta get over that idea that it was an if at one point. It was never an if. It was when I fall in love with a guy. I just hope people accept me. Because I don't want to go back to those days where I was in that dark place. And people say, you know, coming out of the closet and blah 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 and stuff. And it wasn't coming out of anywhere other than the fetal position in the corner of my room holding a knife to myself that's the dark place I came out of it wasn't a closet it was a prison where I was in the corner you know constantly fighting these things it's hard but as long as you build a, you know, a support system that you know will care about you and stuff, you can do it. It can be done. I guess this isn't the best coming out story because, you know, <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of dark crap here. But it's... I've put myself through mental hell. I'm still in that... I'm still in that prison of suppression. And 
I need to break free of it. And you know, doing these YouTube videos has really got me to come out of my shell. And it really is it's very therapeutic to me because I get to talk with all of you guys about my feelings and stuff and it helps. But I suggest to anybody out there that's coming out or wants to come out or is gay or bisexual even, it's okay to be bisexual. There is a group of bisexuals out there. It is. They're they're there. They are real. They're not confused. But just soul search and, you know, come out when you're ready to come out and just stop putting yourself through hell. Like I've done for the past, you know, God, what has it been? 12 years now? My phone's getting a message, but yeah, so I hope this video helps anybody who's out there. It does get better um, as long as, you know, you get out of your suppression. Get out of your suppression. Do it with me here, guys. Break out of the cage. Break out. I'm gay and I'm okay. <laughs> I guess that should be a new slogan. I'm gay and I'm okay. Because I am. I need to be happy with me. And. But yes. So I guess <laughs> this is 26 minutes. You guys are going to kill me for this. So I hope I've helped somebody out there. And stuff. Don't resort to suicide, guys, or self-harm. Don't do it. If you need help, call somebody, you know, do something. Um, contact me. Go on my Twitter page. DM me. Direct message me. Facebook me. Go to my Facebook page. Go to my Google. Comment on this video. Come to me if you need a friend. Okay, because... Nobody should resort in to end their life over something like this. Nobody should. I'm here for you. I care for you. I love you guys. I love everybody. Especially ones, you know, that need the help and love and support. I'm here. Seek me out. Find me. I'm here. I'll even give you my phone number if you need the help. Okay, so stay cool, stay positive, it will get better. And if you need help, contact me. So, I love you all. I hope you all love me. Care so much about you guys. Peace out.